Good day, everyone. Neophyte DAG bringing you another message. And this message is titled King James the Sixth and First, Queen Mary, King Darnley, Queen Anne of Scotland, England, Ireland, France, Wales, Denmark, Norway were black. And in this message, we're going to blow the lid off the foundation of America, United States of America, and all the English-speaking countries that are in the North America, South America, Central America, and the Caribbean. In going through these messages, we always go back to Job 9 verse 24, which warns us of the hands of the wicked is given to the earth, and the earth is always America, and the wicked shall cover it, disguise, hide, do everything possible to make sure the faces of the rulers, the leaders, the prophets, that's the judge, that's what it means, are covered up. And the identity, the true identity is given to another race, which belongs to the race of the wicked. Job 9 verse 24 tells us that. And once that happened, we, dark-skinned race, modern-day blacks, won't know where you're from or who you are. Also, we're going to touch on Testament of Asha 7 verse 6, which tells us pretty much the same thing. For the reasons, for the reasons, things that we have done to cause ourselves to be afflicted, we were going to be scattered like Dan and like Gad, over the entire earth. The earth is America. And you shall not know your land, your tribe, and your language. You won't know any of those things, where you're from, what land you're originally from, what tribe, the 12 tribes that you belong to, and what language you were speaking before you were scattered. With that, we'll jump into King James. King James the sixth. His last name is Stuart, and he was king of Scotland from 1567 to 1625. He became King James I of England, Ireland, France, Wales, and Scotland from 1603 to 1625. So he was king of Scotland first. After Queen Elizabeth I died, he became King James I of England, Ireland, France, Wales, and Scotland. In knowing more about King James the sixth and first, Stuart, we're going to find out where he's from and some of his lineage. First, he was born in Scotland of the Stuart clan. That's where his last name comes from. And he lived in Scotland and in England. King James founded and established the United States of America. He's the one that founded the first successful colony, Virginia, and then other colonies and states were added after that. But that's where it starts. America starts with King James. The state of Virginia, there's a county that's called Jamestown that was named after King James. It took the name after him. That's the first colony, the first county that was established in America was by him, and it was named after King James. The Barbados city of Jamestown, it's renamed now, whole town was named after King James. King James' mother was Queen Mary Stuart of Scotland. She ruled between 1542 to 1567. She was black. His father, King Consort, King Consort meaning you just married the person that's in power. So you kind of, their escort. <laughs> so King Consort Darnley, Stuart of Scotland, he ruled between 1565 to 1567. He was black. His rule was very short, but he was black. King James' wife, Queen Anne of Denmark and Norway, she was also black, and she took the throne with King James 
from 1589 to 1619. In talking about the Stuart clan, I have to show you the map of Scotland broken out by clan. And what I've done, I've circled all of where the Stuart clan had land that they owned and land that they owned in conjunction in marriage union with other clan names. And spoiler alert, all the clan name that you see on this map are clans of black people. You might hear otherwise in your modern day history, but I'm here to not give you what you are told. I'm here to give you what is the truth. They're all black people's name and landmass that were owned at that time of King James. But the circled area, that's where the Stuart clan, King James line of family, that's the landmass that they owned in Scotland, in the highland part of Scotland. And they also had land in the lowland part of Scotland. Let's start with King James' father, which is King Consort Darnley, Stuart of Scotland. This is a picture of King Darnley. This is what he looks like. And this picture is housed in the National Gallery of Scotland. I don't need to go any further to tell you that this man is a black person. The image, the complexion, it's a dark skinned person. But this is King James' father, King Consort Darnley. This is another picture of King James' father, King Consort Darnley Stuart of Scotland. And this picture is from the National Trust Collection of the United Kingdom. Features again, dark skin complexion. Look at some of the features, a nose and so on. This is a, clearly a black person. But this is a picture that's housed in various institutes and collection within Scotland and the UK with the true images of who these people are, but other images of painted over people are being put out on the mainstream media. Going back to Job, your judges will be painted over and disguised to look like other races of the ungodly who actually paint those images over. Let's get a broad overview of the Stuart clan the Stuart Kings of Scotland. There is a whole line of them. It doesn't start with King James. Thousands of years, the Stuart clan ruled Scotland. They're the family line that was chosen to be kings and queen of the entire Scotland. And in reading through this book by Alan Massey, the royal Stuarts, it's talking about the Stuarts of Scotland, when they got into the United Kingdom, or England, they spell it a little differently, S-T-U-A-R-T, -E but it's the S-T-E-W-A-R-T. -E That's the original spelling of it in Scotland. Reading from this book, page 114, it's giving a description of a person who's typically a Stuart. He looked like a Stuart king, tall, dark. That's the feature of Stuart King, tall and dark, a dark skinned person, just the way our Darnley look and how other Stuart King look. But we're starting with the King James line, I won't take you back, but this is the description given of generally how a Stuart King looks dark. We'll jump to King James's mother, Queen Mary Stuart of Scotland. We have one thing to go by so far that Stuarts are dark. Let's look some more into Queen Mary because she was Queen of Scotland. We'll go to the life of Mary Stuart, Queen of Scotland, written by Rosalie Kaufman. And in this book on page 46, it says Mary was now entitled queen. So we're talking about the same person. Her complexion is brunette. 
Let's find out what brunette is because we're not going to get a clear roadmap and you have to do additional work to know what these things are saying. Brunette, because that's her complexion. Brunette from brown. It's a German word from brun. It means brown, a woman with a brown or dark complexion. That's brunette. Let's go back to this book. Her complexion is brunette. She's a dark-skinned person. That's her complexion, brunette. So we're going to be given all these words, hoping that you stop there and you don't look further. But you have to look further when you see complexion description. We're thinking of a brunette Caucasian person. No, it's not. Brunette. Dark complexion. Brown. Let's move on. We're going to get some more information on King James' mother. A time for the death of a king. This book is talking about King Darnley, and it also gives a description of Queen Mary of Scotland. She has auburn hair, all kind of tricky words, and golden complexion, another tricky word. Her complexion is golden. Her hair is auburn. Can't tell you clearly who she is. It has to be covered up, disguised. But let's pull the veil from that disguised. Complexion, golden. What's the meaning of golden according to Webster 1828 dictionary? Yellow of gold color. So it's telling it's a yellowish color. It's a light brown color. Her hair, auburn. It's brown. Auburn means brown of dark colors. Her hair is dark. Her skin is a light brown complexion, a black person. All kinds of tricky words leads back to the same things. She's a black person in our modern day description of these complexion people. This brings us to King James Stewart himself. And this is a picture of King James in a book that King James himself wrote and put his own picture in it. The name of the book is The Works of the Most High and Mighty Prince James by the Grace of God, King of Great Britain, France, and Ireland. This is a picture that King James put in this book that he wrote of himself, dark skin complexion person, unmistakably. This is King James. This is a book that's written by David Harris Wilson, King James the sixth and first on page 168 of this book. An Italian observer, someone from Italy that went to visit King James observed these things. His color, his skin color, blonde, Arthur Wilson, an historian, wrote, King James is ruddy complexion. A lot of different tricky words given for King James's complexion. It's blonde and ruddy. So let's find out these words. We're not going to skip over them today. We're getting to the root of these words. Ruddy, of a red color, of a lively flesh, red color complexion. This gold that they're talking about, ruddy of bright yellow color, as ruddy as a gold, that's the blonde color that you're given here in these description. King James complexion, ruddy, and his color, blonde, gold color. Going back to this definition given in the Webster 1828 dictionary. Examples of ruddy red and ruddy gold, the blonde color that's talked about on the left hand side, that's ruddy red, a red tone complexion match with a red here, a ruddy person. When you see ruddy, that's a description for a ruddy red. And on the right, that's a ruddy gold, a light skin 
in our modern day time, a light brown complexion person with the red hair, ruddy. Either one you want to pick leads back to the same conclusion, a black person in our modern day description of these people. We'll look at another book, and this is the Memoirs of the Court of King James I by Lucy Aiken. This is volume one. The King of England, King James, his complexion is fair and florid complexion. Two different complexion. It's just, again, the disguise. And you have to pull the veil off the disguise. Fair and florid complexion. He's two complexion at one. That's impossible, but it's tricky words. Let's dig into fair and florid. Complexion florid. Florid, bright in color, of a red color, flushed with red, lively red color, which brings us back to ruddy, ruddy of a red color. They're the same thing, just different tricky words to get you back to a ruddy, a red skin complexion person like what we have covered in the pictures in our modern day, a black person. Let's look at fair. Fair doesn't mean the complexion, it's the condition of the skin, clear and free of spots. In that time, people were plagued with smallpox and if you did not have smallpox, you were treated or classified as a fair complexion person. But two descriptions were given. First is the condition of your skin than your actual skin, which brings us back to fair and florid. So in reading this properly, no spots, no blemish, free of spots and blemish, and a ruddy, a dark skin complexion. That's what this is telling you of King James. This is another picture of King James, the sixth and first of the Stuart clan. And this picture identify King James as Jacobus, a Jacobite. We'll get into that in a few. This picture is housed in the National Portrait Gallery of the United Kingdom, a dark skin complexion person. It's clear from the picture that King James is a dark skin person. And you're going to see a lot of pale and fair skin complexion images of King James thrown out out there, but you have to go to these sources where they don't lie. They just put image in front of you to grab your visual attention. And unless you dig into the books, which give the worded description of these people, you'll be led astray and in the deception that's being placed on your eyes. Another book, it's another version now of Lucy Aiken's Memoirs of the Court of King James. This is volume two. And in volume two now of that same book, Lucy changed the description, but she stayed with the same type of deceptive wordings. Solomon and King James were being compared to having the same complexion of that book on page 403. And it says the complexion is white and ruddy. Doesn't change the structure of it. White is the condition of the complexion. And also now white is the modern day term for how we classify people before it changed to actual complexion. And I'll get you into that. And then its complexion is still ruddy, but now it's white instead of fair. Let's jump into those tricky words. We have already established what ruddy is. It's a reddish complexion, so we don't have to dig much into that. Let's dig into white and the condition of the skin, one of the meaning of white that's being thrown out. So white will jump to description five, unblemished, pure and unblemished condition of the skin. That is the white that's being thrown out at you. Later on in 1924 and 1930, white became a complexion type. But in this time, 
what this history is telling you is that it's the condition of the skin because it gave you ruddy after that, which is the true complexion of the skin. And the word before that is the condition of the skin, which is unblemished, which goes back to fair, free of spots and blemishes. I'll take you further. I'll give you the other meaning of white that was being implied in the book, the memoir of the court of King James. White, a person of any skin complexion that is born of a direct European ancestry, and that was the rule and the law that was in place between 1676 and 1924. White race or white people entered the European language in the 17th century. That's during the years 1600, 1601 to 1699. In the European colonies, meaning the colonies that are in the New World, North America, South America, Central America, and the Caribbean, these societies did not have any notion of a white race. It came and was invented during the 1676 lasted until 1924. It changed after 1924, but that's when it came up, this term white as a complexion. Now, European dark skin, brown skin, ruddy skin, fair skin, light skin, and pale skin were all classified as white social status. That's what it was between that time of our history it was a social status. In 1924, it changed to a complexion. But all these people, dark, brown skin, ruddy skin, fair skin, light, and pale skin were all classified as white. This is a proof that I'm going to present to you to show you that. You go back to the United States Declaration of Intention. This is an immigration document. I'll bring you to description is, on this form, white, complexion, ruddy. That's the document on the left-hand side. And the document on the right-hand side, description, color, white, complexion, dark. That's telling you this is a white classification, but the complexion is ruddy and the complexion is dark. Again, it's a social status white. The complexion doesn't have anything to do with the white at that particular point in time. This custom form lasted up until the year 1924, and it's a document from the United States of America, the Department of Labor, which controlled the immigration and the naturalization at that time. Give you more example, more of the same form, Description is color, white, complexion, dark. Same on the right-hand side. Description, white, color, fair. So it's telling you all these different complexion type people were white. And if you look on the document on the right-hand side, the person was born in Scotland. The document on the left, the person was born in Scotland as well. And let's go back here. The person was born in England. And the document on the right, the person was born in Ireland. So people from all these countries with these different complexion type were classified as white. Even the fair-skinned people of our time now, which we call the only whites, no, they weren't the only whites at that time. Dark-skinned, ruddy-skinned people were also white before it changed. It changed in 1924, the Racial Integrity Act, and it, that act was amended in 1930, which changed the white classification now to if you are a 100% Caucasian blood, that's the only way you can continue to be classified as white. If you have 
less than 100% Caucasian blood, you became black. So the dark skin, ruddy skin, brown skin people were pushed out of the white classification and they were moved into the black classification by default. And then in 1930, the rule changed to say, if you are dark skin, brown skin, or ruddy skin, the belief is that you're from Africa and therefore you become black in categorization. That changed the rule. So going back to King James, the white classification means that he was of that white status, that white social class, and he was a ruddy complexion person. That's why I had to walk you through this. Let's continue with the Racial Integrity Act because I have to drive this one home to get rid of all the mental psychosis that's been placed around color, white and black. Racial Integrity Act, a white person who could trace their bloodline as a Caucasian, 100% pure Caucasian, was able to keep that categorization of being white, that status of being white. And if you could not prove that you're pure blood, then you were moved out into the category that's called colored. That category in 1930 was changed to black because the colored were now believed to be of African ancestry, even though you were not, you were from Europe. But because now everyone who's dark skin, brown skin, ruddy skin is believed to be from Africa, you were put into that default category as black. But it doesn't change the fact as to where you were from, what language you spoke, and what tribe you belong to. Now, going back to Testament of Asha 7, verse 6, these warnings were given to the children of Israel that these things are going to happen. You will not know what language you spoke, what tribe you belong to, and what country, what land you came from because of this 1924 and 1930 rule which put you and defaulted you into African ancestry, creating the term African American. You are not African American. You are from Europe first, and you were brought into America. You can figure out who you are from there. I won't put you into any category. Brings us back to King James, the original Jacobite. This is a picture of King James that's housed in the National Portrait Gallery of the United Kingdom. Take a look at King James. Undisputed, a black person in our modern day definition of what a black person is. Portrait of him that was available in 1608 black person, and he regarded himself as a Jacobite. You see Jacobus in the description around the picture of King James. Which brings us to Jacobites. If you're not convinced that King James and all the people that were in Scotland who associated themselves as with King James were black in our modern day term, and they were dark-skinned, ruddy-skinned, brown-skinned people, we're going to go to the Jacobites, because King James is the original Jacobite. Everyone else who followed King James and what he believed in were regarded as Jacobites. The Jacobites were exiled. Some of them, in the year 1745, were exiled to Antigua and Martinique in the Caribbean, as political prisoners. Their ideas became too radical for the United Kingdom at that time, England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, and they were rounded up, arrested, tried, and became political prisoners and exiled to the Caribbean and North America. These Jacobites are in North America at this time, their descendants are here in America, and I'll prove that to you. 
We go to this book, Jacobite Gleanings from the State Manuscript. This is from the books, the records that were being kept by the legal, the political rulers of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Everything the crown did, it had to document it and kept a record of it. And this is the transportation record of 150 rebel prisoners that were shipped from Liverpool in England to Antigua, the Leeward Islands, Antigua is in the Leeward Islands, and Martinico, the Martinique Island. They were carried through Martinique. Their ultimate destination is Antigua. And we're going to look at the remarks column. These are all the names of the people that were shipped. I gave you the entire 150 names, and I want you to pay close attention to the remarks column. Robert Adam, brown complexion, smooth-faced. <laughs> William Bell, black curl hair, strong made. Douglas Campbell, brown complexion. Alex Cadenock, black, ruddy. King James is ruddy, black and ruddy. It's the same complexion as King James. Douglas Campbell, brown complexion. All these people, just keep reading the remarks column. You see all these people, brown, black, ruddy complexion. And it goes all the way through the 150 prisoner list. And I want to draw your attention if you might say, well, they were fair skin and pale skin. And these descriptions are not accurate. Let's jump to prisoner 62, John Crookshanks, fair complexion. Let's jump to 63. Duncan McLeod, pale complexion. So wherever possible where there were pale complexion, they'll list that. But wherever there were dark complexion. 71, Joseph Brown, dark complexion. It's telling you where identified what the complexion is. These 99% of the prisoners were dark skin, brown skin. And I'll even jump you to prisoner 40, James Nielsen, black, swarthy. Swarthy means dark skin complexion. So they're telling you this man is black, swarthy. So it's telling you where it is, undisputable. And these are all Jacobite prisoners. The book says so. I didn't make this thing up. Short sketches of the Jacobites which King James is the original Jacobite, all dark-skinned people. We'll go to prisoner 44, John Stewart. That's of the King James line. Wherever you see Stewart, it's from the Stewart clan. Brown complexion and ruddy as well. Brown ruddy. That's what this is telling you, undisputable. 52, John Stewart, another Stewart from the Stewart clan. Brown, swarthy complexion. So the Stuart line, or swarthy. If you trace these names to the clans of Scotland, you'll see they're all dark-skinned people, which will support the statement I made in the beginning that the clans of Scotland were dark-skinned, brown-skinned, ruddy-skinned people, not the fair-skinned, pale-skinned people that you're led to believe now in your modern washed over history that the ungodly had changed the judges to make them the complexion of the ungodlies. The rest of the list, you go through it, you'll see dark complexion, brown complexion, swarthy complexion, you'll see a few fair complexion, pale complexion, but the overall theme of this they are 99% dark skin, brown skin, ruddy skin, swarthy skin, complexion people that were shipped from Scotland to the Caribbean, Antigua, and Martinique. 
which is in the description, of the 135 men, 18 hailed from Perthshire, Scotland, 20 from Iverness, Scotland, 25 from Aberdeen, Scotland, and 19 from England, and one from Ireland. Undisputed, that's what it's telling you. And it even break out Edinburgh writer George Hume, age 30, marked as a black man whose color was no doubt suited for the West Indies. They all went to Antigua. Some of them went to Martinique. Some were now reclaimed from Martinique and brought into Antigua. Jacobites, dark-skinned people from the lineage from the following of King James, the sixth and the first of Scotland, England, Ireland, Wales, and France. This brings us back to the map of Scotland. And as you can see, all the names on the map, these are surnames, family names. Many of these names are on the list we just went through. But all these family names are names of dark skin, brown skin, ruddy skin complexion people that occupied Scotland at that time. They owned these land spaces and they were all moved out into North America, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean. If you look in these countries, you'll see these names spread out all over with dark skin folks. This is where they are from. I've proven that in other videos that there are dark skin people in Scotland. And just to name that list, it's a one indication as to where you can go with it to do your own research. Let's jump to King James' wife, Queen Anne of Denmark and Norway. And to understand what complexion she was, we'll read from this book, Anne of Denmark, wife of James VI of Scotland, James I of England by Ethel Carlton Williams. On page 21 of that book, it says, Anne, underlined in light blue, with her ivory complexion, another tricky word. But we will go to our books here to show that ivory isn't white, as you would normally think. That's one of the meaning, yes. But if you look down below, you see ivory black. That's the true meaning of King James's wife and complexion, ivory. And we'll have the other evidence to support that. But ivory isn't white. Ivory is black as well. So she's ivory black. That's another word this guy to throw you off from the true identity of who these people are. I call them spell words. We'll continue. This is a picture of Queen Anne of Denmark and Norway, and this picture is housed in the National Portrait Gallery, a dark-skinned complexion woman. That's Queen Anne. Take a look at it. That's her, a dark-skinned woman. This is another picture of Queen Anne of Denmark and Norway. This is a coin that was minted in her honor, and it's being sold in an auction by Timothy Millet Limited. That's a metal and works auctioneer. And this is one of the items that's listed there. Features of a dark-skinned woman. Not convinced? Check out the hair. Check out the cornrow braids. Look at the hair and you will see the feature of a black woman. This is a picture of King James the sixth and first and his wife, Queen Anne of Denmark and Norway. And this portrait of King James and his wife was done by Johan Werex. And it's currently being housed at the Wellcome Collection Museum in the United Kingdom. And as we have established in numerous readings and books, 
and from pictorial evidence, King James was black. And in this picture, his wife and King James have the same complexion. They're both black. So in words and in image, they are both black. Undisputed that they are black. But you'll see many other different images that the ungodly had painted of King James and his wife showing another race and another complexion, but still doesn't change the fact that King James was a ruddy complexion person in our modern day, a black person, and his wife, Queen Anne of Denmark and Norway, was also a black person. Conclusion. King James the sixth and first of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, and France was black. No confusion about that one. No disputing that one as well. Queen Mary Stuart of Scotland, which is King James' mother, was black. She's of the Stuart clan of Scotland, and the Stuart clan were all black. King Consort Henry Darnley Stuart of Scotland, King James's father, was black. His image is black, his feature is black, and he was a Stuart, and all Stuart kings are and were dark skin. They were black. Queen Consort Anne of Denmark and Norway, King James' wife, was also black. So that settled the history of King James and his now starting of America in 1607. A black person, a black man, started America, which is now our United States of America. And his sons continued that rulership of America all the way up until the independence of America. His sons were the ones, his lineage were the ones that were in control of America, which brings me to conclusion five, which cannot be disputed or refuted by anyone. All the children of King James I and Queen Anne Consort Anne were black, which brings us next to Charles I, who was King James and Queen Anne's son, who became the King of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales after King James had passed away. Charles I, we'll cover that in another message, Charles I was a black person, and Charles I, all his descendants, his children, were black as well. All these people were black. Which brings us back to the Testament of Asha 7, verse 6. You shall not know your land, tribe, and language, but we're now moving into Testament of Asher 7, verse 7. But the Most High and the Lord, Thoth, will gather you in faith, in your belief in the Most High, in the Lord, Thoth, through his compassion and on account of the covenant that the Lord, Thoth, and the Most High have made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because of those agreement which they have made to say, I shall bring your descendants out of their affliction by the ungodly, and they shall be given great substance, which is, will gather them as a community, will give them back their political power, their kingship, their rulership, will give them economic wealth, will change their food and start to give them the right food. No meat, starch, dairy, and sugar will bring them back to a vegetarian food and fruits, fruits made of seed, with seeded fruits, diet. 
and will give them back that connection that they have with the Most High through their mind, their head, their crown will give them back their crown and their pineal. And that's what the Testament of Asha 7 verse 7 is telling you. You shall be brought back to the Most High because of your faith, your belief in the Most High and the agreement that he has made with our forefathers and our four mothers. With that, I'll bring this message to an end. And as always, continue to gain knowledge, never stop gaining knowledge. Be strong, stand strong, and stay strong.